Welcome back, younglings. This is Mark Price at devslopes.com. And uh, here we are again to program our React app, and it's coming together nicely. We've got props in place, or rather properties uh, for our product. And all we need to do now is actually, instead of having test data, actually get it from uh, the server. And so we're going to need to work with state uh, and do a few other things here. So first things first. Okay, let's go ahead and initialize a default state. So what, where you would do that is in your constructor. Remember, the constructor is where things are first called. And so we're going to say this.state equals, we're going to say products, and we're going to make an empty array. Now, state is simply an object that holds different properties. Okay, so in my example of the person, okay, you know, the state of a person might be hunger level, um, attitude, okay. Um, fatigue, you know, different things that are changeable on a person, you know, hair, hair color, if someone dyes their hair, okay. So what we're doing here is we're just saying, hey, one of the objects that I want in state is called products. Now, we don't have to initialize it here as an empty array. But the reason why I want to is because it may not have data in the beginning, and I don't want anything to be null. I, I want, uh, if there's no products yet, you know, the, the, the react and all the product components that we use, should just display zero. But if this was null, we could have problems. So I'm just initializing it as an empty array. That's all that's happening here. And the next thing I want to do is actually create a way to have uh, a, one function that produces multiple products. So we don't have to copy. This, this is not feasible. What if we needed to show 100? This is ridiculous. We wouldn't do it this way. So what we're going to do is create a new function called product list. OK, no parameters. And in this product list, what we're going to do is we are going to just iterate through the products that we get from JSON, and we're going to create a, a product attribute. OK, so let's create a constant here. And I'm just going to call it list. That's the name of the constant that I'm calling it. We're going to say this.state.products.map. Now, of course, map is a JavaScript function which goes through an array, every element in an array, and, it, and you can do something. Uh, and then it returns it into the list when it's all done. OK. And of course, map takes the callback function, but we're going to use ES6. If you've never used uh, JavaScript map function, go online and do a tutorial on it. Okay, I've just explained what it done, and we're going to do it here. But if you want more information, uh, you can look at it online. Uh, and there's some great tutorials and information. Um, we're going to say product JSON. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> what we're going to do is we are going to, uh, so for every item that's in this array, OK, um, this is the JSON for that object. We should just call it product, OK? What it's going to do is it's going to go through each product in the array, and it's going to call this function and pass it in, and we do something with it. Well, in our case, we want to actually create, um, we want to create a, uh, a product component every single time. And so what I'm going to do is create an outer div here, OK? And it's going to be equal to what we've already done down there uh, in some way. So we're going to make this a, a column of four, OK, for, for small screens and up. We're not doing this for every screen size. We're just, uh, that's the bootstrap thing. And we can go back later and do UI if we wanted to. But that's not what this is about. And we need to give it a custom key. Whenever you're working with lists in React, you have to give it a unique identifier uh, in your list. Otherwise, it has uh, major problems and won't function properly. So in our case, we know that our data from our database has a unique Mongo, I, Mongo database ID. And so we can actually use that here as the unique ID. So we're going to say key equals product dot underscore ID. Remember, this product is coming directly from the database. You saw us print it out, and we know that it's there. So all I'm doing is grabbing it and setting it as the unique ID in this div. OK, so whenever you're working with a list, the outermost item in that list, so even though we're doing things in here, the key name has to be out here, OK, on the most upper level. All right. And this is where we can now put in our product like we did before, right? And we'll say title equals product dot title. OK, this is coming directly from the server, right? We know that it's called the t title. And then the price is going to be product dot price. The good news is our component already implements these. We're just grabbing it from the actual data now. And the image URL is going to be equal to the product.img URL. OK. So what we're doing here is we are um, here in this 
in this product here, we are going through the map function and we're creating a new product for every item that's in the that's in the array. And of course, this is the array in the state. Okay, so remember that we're going to be putting we're going to be putting the the data we get from the internet here in this products in the state. And that's what we're doing here for every product that came from the internet that came from the API uh, in this array. Let's go through it, pass in that that iteration of it, and let's use the data for, uh, for some purpose. And uh, you know what? We don't even need this curly brace here or this one. We can just actually um, uh, do that there. So um, for this uh, map function here, which is really cool. Unless what we're gonna do? Whoa, it's kind of funky. <laughs> All right, that's great. Brackets, you're uh, making yourself look bad. All right, and we're gonna return. All right, our list now. If you're wondering, hey, Mark, why in the world did you just put parentheses uh, around this uh, list here? What is wrong with this file? It is just tripping out. I think it really wanted, uh, you don't have to put the curly braces in here, but maybe we should just put them in so it stops yelling at us here. All right, maybe it'll stop yelling at us now, yeah. Okay, so we're returning the list inside of parentheses because remember that's what React requires. Okay, if you remember when you when you render something, you need to put it in parentheses. So all we're doing here is we're returning the list, uh, and uh, React's going to know what to do with it. And so there's a list. This list right here, no long. This list right here includes three of these. Okay, three divs and three products inside of those three divs. And it's there's a, a list of three of them, and that's what we're returning. And that's what we're actually going to use. And so what's really cool is down here, instead of doing this with all these three products, all we have to do now is uh, put in this dot product list. Okay. So we're just calling the function right here. We're calling this function, and it's returning these items to us uh, with the data from the uh, from the server. Now we're not quite there yet. We haven't we haven't really um, set the state yet. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we're loading the data, which is great. Um, but we have this product list function. But remember how with functions, you can't use them until you bind them, uh, so long as you're using the ES6 syntax. So we're going to say this dot product list equals this dot product list dot bind this. And you're going to want to do that for every function you create, of course. And so what we want to do is we want to uh, right here when we actually get the products, we want to set the state. Okay, so normally you might think, oh, let's just do this dot set state. Okay, and we're going to say products is going to be equal to products. Okay, this is probably confusing you, but we called our data products here. So let's call it data again so it's not confusing. And the products here is referring to the products in our state. So you might think, oh, let's use this dot set state, and that's going to set the state here. Um, but one problem we have is we are actually inside of a promise. Okay, see this dot then? It's inside of a promise, and it's completely screwing up um, our bind. It's screwing up, screwing up our this. So what we need to do is create a reference to the this uh, before the promise is actually loaded. So we're going to say var self equals this. So this is going to refer to our component. But remember, once we get inside the promise here, uh, this is like funky. It's, it's referring to the promise and no longer to our component, which is bad because it's asynchronous. And again, these are some of those things that are like, what's going on? It's crazy. And you may not need to understand it, but just know that if you're working with a promise like you are here, you gotta, you've got to hold a reference to the this because when you do it in here, it won't have access to it because it's inside of a promise. And um, just watch this video again and again until you get it. Okay. So we're going to use the self instead. Okay. And so here's something incredibly critical for you to know. Incredibly critical. Setting the state, this dot set state, or in this case self dot set state, every time set state is called in React, it will reload that component and all the components inside of it. Okay? It won't go to the ones above it, but it will go to the ones inside of it. So if I say set state, it's gonna redo this whole thing again. Okay, it's gonna reload this entire component. It's gonna get the data, it's gonna pass it or excuse me, it's not gonna it's not gonna do the the constructor, but what it's gonna do is this uh, rendering down here. It's gonna reload all of that. It's gonna fetch the new data and shove it down, and every component underneath is gonna be reloaded. Okay, that's what happens every time you call set state. So if you want something to refresh, 
call set state, okay? So rule of thumb, if I want something in my UI to refresh, I need to call set state on the component, uh, on the highest component that I want to start the refresh at, and it will therefore go down and refresh every other component and repass down every prop uh, to uh, those components, okay? Uh, super important to know. So we're saying state. this is great, um, and we're passing in the data for the products. This is looking good here. This is looking good. This is looking good. Um, it's coming together. Let's see, self.setState. I'm just making sure we have everything that we need here. Let's save this and run it and see what happens. It may, it may not work. We'll see. It looks like it's not working. Let's see what errors we get. Okay, app.js. It expected a return value in this function array call, callback return. It's and it's this is on line 35. On line 35. So, um, all right. So something's wrong in our function here. Do do do. Yeah. You know, let's just get rid of these curly braces. Because I'm not. I didn't return anything. It was just giving us weird weird errors um, or weird spacing. There we go. And there you have it. Uh, it's loaded up. This is coming from the this is coming from the API and the database. Uh, pretty cool, right? We just did this. We're building a real a real application that's doing real things and talking to real databases. So, one last review before we call this video done is what we did was we started working with state. Okay, the state is like the state of a person or a state of an object. It can change. Okay, and so what we do is we load the data, and then when the data is loaded, we set the state. We're saying, hey, let's refresh. We got new data. Let's refresh the UI. And of course, we can't access this inside of a promise. So if you see a dot, then just know you can't. You can't no long. You can no longer say this unless you grab a reference to it right here. So var self is just a variable, and we we're storing the reference to the component, so we can then say self dot set state. Okay, and then in here we're passing in the data that we want to refresh, which is the products, which we're getting from the server, this data right here. So it goes into this products array. And then what's going to happen is this render function is going to be called again. It's going to go down and it's going to say this dot product list. So it's going to call this product list function, which uses a JavaScript mapping array. And you pretty much always use dot map with React whenever you have a list. Just know that if you have something that needs to repeat, you're going to use dot map, which goes through every item in the list. So every item that we have in the products array in the state, it's going to go through, drop that product in here, then we can grab the data out of it, put it into our component that we want to use. We pass the data into the different props or properties, and then we return the list down here and it renders it to the screen. And of course, in our product, okay, we're accessing the props by saying this dot props and it's coming from the parent. And of course, when that set state was called, this, of course, too, is also refreshed every single time. A lot to take in. If you are super confused, go back through the videos again over and over again. You can also read the tutorials on React website. There is so much good information there, and we're just barely scratching the surface, but we're making great progress. So that's it for now. Mark Price at devslopes.com.